Hello and welcome back to the Go Tanium show. This is our first recording in the new year of 2021 and we are talking about use the enforce, Luke. Yes, that's a really bad pun and I'm full of them, but uh, you know what? Um, I actually cleaned my office over the break. I had a week off between Christmas and New Year's. My wife said she was impressed she could see the floor. So I apologize if this is not the usual messy office you're expecting. There's plenty of mess back there, I promise. But anyway, hey, today we're not here to talk about my messy office. We're going to talk about uh, a, a Tam friend of mine whose name is Jason, and he has helped me out with my customer multiple times because they're a really big protect module user. And we're going to talk about what's new in the enforce module, which is replacing protect and adding a ton of new features. Jason, why don't you say hi to our audience today and introduce yourself? Hey, Ashley, thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, Jason Stow, I have been here at Tanium for going on six years now. Uh, it's going by super quick. Uh, met a lot of great people, work on a lot of exciting new products, and I'm really super excited to talk about uh, Enforce 1.5 and what we're bringing to the table today. Man, that's some serious longevity in Tanium years, man. Wow. Ooh, yes. I, I just shaved my gray beard. It wasn't quite <laughs> as long as yours. as like right here, but yeah. Yeah. All right, man. So uh, for some of our audience may have never used Protect or Enforce. Can you just give us a quick backstory on, okay, here's what the Protect module did. Here's why we saw a need for Enforce and where that kind of that big picture real quick. Yeah, sure. So the Protect module has been around for, at Tanium for, I think, three, three and a half years. And it was really brought to market to allow customers to manage the native security stack that they already own in Windows. But to do that inside of Tanium and leverage the, the speed and scale that, that we provide in the, the Tanium platform. Uh, and to manage uh, these policy settings, uh, these security stacks and Protect, uh, we would do, th do so uh, with local policy settings. Um, and since we already had a mechanism to do that, and we have a great platform that provides speed and, speed and scale, we thought, well, let's create a framework. Let's provide customers the ability to manage all of the policy settings, not only for specific security things, but uh, user-based, machine-based, um, op-centric settings. So anything that you would need to set on your endpoint, uh, let's open that up uh, to the end user. And you said that, uh, that there's, you said Windows, but did you mention anything about Linux? I know there's some cross-platform in there as well, right? Yeah, definitely. So uh, Enforce does provide uh, the ability to manage uh, firewall rules on uh, Linux. Uh, and on the Mac side, we offer uh, file vault. So we will escrow file vault keys, manage those configuration policies, as well as uh, remediation policies on Linux and Mac. And Linux, uh, remediation is going to be, you know, uh, cleaning up after a malware incident or setting some, some type of configuration baseline, whether it be killing processes, deleting uh, files and things like that. So I'm going to ask you a very leading question here. Yes. I did Active Directory for 20 years. I started with the release candidate in 1999. And I know the answer to what I'm going to ask you, but I want to hear it from you. Why would we not use Active Directory group policy for this? It's, it's native in the box. Why do we need Tanium to do this? That's a great question, Ashley. And as you just stated, Active Directory GPOs have been around for a long time. Um, they can get super complex to manage and difficult to manage. Um, you don't really have insight um, once you push those policy settings as to you know if they're on the endpoint or not. Um, so the the health of your environment uh, as policies go. So um, in addition to that, you know if the machine isn't domain joined, uh, you can apply policy to it uh, from a central location. Uh, you know forest complexity, multiple domains, all that comes into the picture, um, provides big headaches for admins for a long, long time, uh, last 20 something years. So uh, we're abstracting that. Um, we provide, you know, as long as the uh, customer has the Tanium client on their endpoint, it uh, doesn't matter if they're on-prem, uh, work from home, uh, if it's a server, laptop workstation, uh, you can manage policy on it with an enforce. That's a good point because, you know, the, the classic argument is it's not domain joined or you've got, you know, 40 million dozen domains and how do I manage all those group policies and all that place and that's crazy. But now with work from home where machines may not have easy connectivity to a domain controller, it even makes it a more compelling story to use Tanium to do that. Why don't we jump right in and go ahead and show us uh, kind of a, a tour of the Enforce console and uh, show us what's uh, 
coming up. Yeah, sounds good. Let me get my screen shared here. So what I really want to talk about is, as I mentioned, the the idea or the concept of a continuous monitoring on the policy health of your environment. Um, so not only can you create these policies uh, that we can see here, um, so this highlights the basic policy types we have. And really new to in the Enforce module is the ADMX policy type. So uh, with the release of Enforce 1.5, uh, we have uh, what we call parity with uh, Protect as far as policy types go. Um, but we also have the m machine administrative template policy types. And, and that's the real um, benefit. Uh, that's where we're really providing the meat uh, inside of uh, enforces the ability to set any policy setting. Um, but I wanna, I wanna highlight the enforcements capability. So we, we create our policies and then we enforce those out to endpoints. Um, and you know, with the Tanium platform, we can create computer groups based on any attribute on the endpoint. So it's really easy and it's really um, granular. Uh, you have a granular capability that is to be able to push these settings to any machine that you need to based on any uh, piece of metadata on the endpoint. Uh, so That's not huge. Yeah, yeah, because in group policy, you'd have like WMI filters, uh, you know, to get that level of granularity with the criteria on the machine. But then you had, you know, layers of OUs and permissions, and it could get pretty gnarly trying to figure out where the policies are coming from. Yeah, um, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. And we've done a, a really good job at making this as easy as we can for the administrator. Uh, so if we look at a, a policy enforcement real quick here, uh, we, we know that we've got this workstation baseline policy applied out there. And we know just by the, the policy um, status here, um, what is going on in the endpoint. So we, we can have positive confirmation that all of the settings that are in this actual policy are on that endpoint. Ooh, nice. That, I mean, this is like RSOP in real time for group policy, result instead of policy type thing. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really, really easy. Uh, it's really um, simple to go look, verify that everything is in place. Uh, and, you know, if something is uh, not behaving correctly, you would have a not applied status or an error status. And it provides a quick ingress point to go troubleshoot those matters further. So providing uh, additional value to the to the admin there if they need to figure out, hey, what's going on? Um, we'll actually tell you, you know, hey, um, you're trying to apply a policy, so a BitLocker policy to a machine that doesn't support BitLocker, AppLocker, things like that, Ooh, nice. or, or GPO health on this endpoint, um, mm -hmm. just on the Windows side of the house is, isn't... Uh, isn't in a healthy state. So we'll, we'll give you all that uh, value as well. If we quickly uh, edit this policy, um, we can go look at the, the user interface we have. So if we're um, used to native group policy, hunting and pecking for a specific policy setting by name can be kind of laborious. Um, we've done a, a, a nice job here at providing a top level uh, search capability. So if I'm looking for things related to like remote desktop, it's easy for me to uh, put that search term in there and filter down on the categories that contain my my search criteria. That's handy. Yeah, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the share here. So I noticed in there it said machine administrative templates. That's very specific. I recognize the group policy language. So so that means we're talking to the the machine half. Group policy is machine based or user based. And then administrative templates is a specific segment of group policy. So it sounds like we're fairly targeted there. What about support for user side policies or other settings in group policy? Yeah, we uh, we targeted the the most broadly used uh, categories at first. Um, so we've got the administrative policies in there. You can uh, bring your own administrative policy templates. Uh, you'll notice uh, on screen that I've, we've got Google, Firefox, and some of the third party things. Um, what we're looking at doing next is bringing in support for security policies. So your user rights assignments, your audit, audit policies, things like mm -hmm. that, um, to really bring that uh, holistic uh, policy management uh, capability inside of the product. Um, and then a little bit further down the road, uh, we are also looking at doing user-based policies as well, because that's, you know, something pretty, pretty popular. You're looking at controlling um, device restrictions, uh, removal storage, things like that. You want to do that based on user, not, not machine sometimes. So, you know, that uh, is something we want to provide uh, capability to as well. 
So I've heard we've taken the BitLocker and File Vault management and really taken that to a new level now in this new release. Can you show us uh, some of those enhancements? Yeah, absolutely. So previously, when we offered BitLocker policies in Protect, um, they, they look by and large the same inside of Enforce, um, but we've made the, the uh, provisioning and, and um, managing of the escrow database uh, a lot easier. We've also uh, layered on some additional uh, capabilities inside of the policy. So if I edit in a, an existing uh, BitLocker policy here, uh, I want to highlight some of the new things here uh, under the section non-operating system uh, disk encryption. Uh, this is essentially BitLocker to go. Uh, and what we're doing there at our, in our first approach of this is actually escrowing uh, the keys. So um, if you have a device mounted that is encrypted with BitLocker to go, uh, we will actually escrow those recovery keys. Um, and we're going to let you know inside of our uh, in, uh, encryption uh, database section here, whether that's a operating system key or if that's a removable device key. And we're also going to push the policy setting that uh, says that uh, only uh, you have to have the, the, excuse me, you have to have the, uh, I can't talk today, Ashley. It's not even Friday. It's not even Friday yet. <laughs> no, it's not. All right. <laughs> that the machine must be encrypted with BitLocker to go in order for you to write to it. So that's, that's what we're doing there. And okay. uh, in, the, now in that's, the near future. That's in addition to, we already have a lot of removable media policies in Protect. But this is in addition to that, specifically with regard to encryption. That's right, right. And I think the real value there is making sure that we've got those keys backed up for you. Mm -hmm. and, and coming shortly in this same vein is going to be support for um, fixed data drives as well. Cool. And we've even got end-user notification built in. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. So this is the mechanism by which you're going to let your end users know that their machine is going to be encrypted. Um, if you're going to push a TPM plus pin policy, this is how you would uh, collect the pin from the end user. Okay, cool. So I've heard there's some uh, cleverness now on the setup for this because uh, and we should probably talk about this because if you're going to escrow keys, that means I've got to store them somewhere. And Tanium has provided a way to do that. Uh, walk us through that. Because I know in the past, it was this long, arduous, Postgres, external kind of painful process. What, what's the new thing look like? Yeah, this is the new hotness here, Ashley. Um, it's going to be saving customers and TAMs a ton of time. Uh, let me get that screen shared out here. All right. So um, as you mentioned, uh, the, the pain in, in Protect uh, was around uh, provisioning a, a Postgres uh, database for the endpoint encryption keys for FileVault and BitLocker. Uh, but it was a bit of a manual process. Um, so you would have to go set up uh, Postgres manually, uh, enable SSL, uh, do a bunch of different things, jump through some hoops, and hopefully get the connection string right, uh, and then cross your fingers. Uh, so what we've done here uh, in Enforce is, is try to make that a lot easier, and I think we've done a, a good job at that. Uh, so in this example here, um, and I do want to note, too, the, the pre-flight checklist we have here at the top. So uh, this is making sure that your environment is healthy, it's ready to go to store BitLocker and FileVault keys. So uh, end user notifications installed, it's compatible. You've got Direct Connect installed, installed and it's configured correctly. Uh, you have your KEK, your um, basically your key down here, encryption key, uh, the master key, you have that created and saved. Uh, so all these things are good to go and ready for you. And then down here under the uh, database settings section, um, if I click uh, modify on what I have here, you'll notice two main uh, sections, uh, TMS hosted, uh, what I have in this instance. Uh, and this is this is great. So it used to take hours uh, to get this thing connected if you're, you're doing a POC, uh, if you're setting this up initially. Uh, literally, this takes seconds now. So you click this radio button and you hit save and your Postgres database is auto-provisioned on your module server. It's ready to go. You can start escrow escrowing keys immediately. Uh, and then we have the self-hosted option where we still offer that uh, legacy supports for Postgres. And we also offer support for Microsoft SQL Server. So that was a popular request from customers as well. If they already have a SQL Server out there, they have an instance ready to go. I just need to create a new database and, and provide some credentials for it. So that does sound like that makes it a lot easier. What's the user experience like when they need to recover a key? 
great question. Uh, it's pretty simple. So um, we have this endpoint encryption tab over here inside of the Enforce Workbench. Mm -hmm. uh, and this uh, is RBAC. So we have specific RBAC roles around this if you only want to have your, you know, your, your staff able to access and retrieve these keys, kind of like a specific help desk function, what have you. It'll be locked down to just this screen if, if that's what the customer needs. Uh, but you have a, a series of tabs here. So we do have some auditing capabilities, but the real meat of it, clicking on this and clicking uh, view so I can view the recovery key. All right. And then you, you can also uh, get a heads up view here of who's retrieved keys and where they've retrieved them from. Uh, oh, this brings nice. us to a good point. It's either going to be accessed from the Tanium server or here in the workbench or from the optional self-service recovery portal. Okay. Well, man, unfortunately, the, the clock is working against us here. We're almost out of time. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it goes so fast. So I, I actually saw your internal presentation today, and I know we can only talk about certain things that are coming, but what type of teasers can you throw out to our audience for things that are coming next in Enforce? So we have the recovery portal, uh, which is coming out in the next couple of weeks. And this is, it's optional for the customers to use, but um, this is something that is a server that can be instantiated outside of the Tanium ecosystem uh, in order to recovery those bit lock, recover those BitLocker and FileVault keys. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have uh, like a self-service use case in mind, so end users can get their own recovery keys and essentially take a help desk out of the loop, producing those calls, those tickets coming in. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, user-based policies. We have security policies. Um, and there's a plethora of other things, man. We've, we've got a lot of things coming. Uh, integrations with Comply. So, um, you know, most of the findings that we have in, in, in Comply scans um, are from policy settings. So you'll be able to take the findings from those comply scans and pivot over to enforce and create uh, policies based on those findings and quickly uh, enforce those out to your environment. Oh, nice. Wow. Well, Jason, thanks for joining us today on the Otanium show. This has been good. This still just amazes me how, how many times there's a new module showing up in the Tanium console. There's new innovation that just continues to drive deeper into these modules as they each get versioned up. You know, this is just version 1.5 that we're releasing this week uh, for Enforce. So it's uh, plenty of great things ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and put up my title slide here because there is a short link here for you. Remember I talked about one of my favorite websites at Tanium is kb.tanium.com where you can go see those release notes. So here in our bit.ly short link today slash tenforce15, that's going to take you over to the release notes for Enforce where you can uh, read about not only these features, but some other ones we didn't have time to cover as well. Also, take a look in the community. You're going to see a post coming up very soon about some malicious Chrome extensions that we were able to use in force to remedy at speed and scale of Tanium. So check out the community content for Enforce and those release notes. And until next time, go Tanium. <laughs>